China makes up a fifth of the world's population, so most international businesses would be mad to ignore the possibility of trading there. But some enterprises hit problems when they find there's a definite Eastern way of doing things that isn't so easy to understand. That's where doing an MBA in China can be useful. Well, to discuss this, let's talk to Professor Fan Wang, Dean of Sun Yat-sen University School of Business in Guangzhou, the largest city in South China. It's the only Chinese business school in The Economist's top 100 MBA rankings. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. Professor Wang, or Fan, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thank you. So first of all, what are the main differences in the way that business is done in the East and the West? Because surely business principles are the same all the world over. I think the major difference from, comes from the different culture and the people's behavior. So in general, management we can see there is the combination of the science and the arts. So the Western ways that people prefer to control the whole business system, uh, to control the set process, organization, people, by a very direct way, by the transparent way. But in the East, especially in Chinese way, we do not want to do that. We want to have a very complete view by a nature, balanced way, and to pursue the long-term benefits rather than the individual. And how do you link then the global and the Chinese ways of doing things in your MBA program? Because the mission of our school is to integrate the East and the West. So we make sure the local and the global anywhere of the MBA program. For example, we hire mixed faculties. The Chinese faculty, they have the working experience or study experience in the West. But uh, uh, for our foreign faculty, they have to understand China well. So we use the contents for all the courses mixed with the cases and the test books. And we provide international experience for the students. They can understand, for example, internship, exchange, courses. So I'll give you one example that we provide overseas courses in the world, like the luxury and the branding in France, innovation in Sweden and Israel, service operation in Singapore, and the big data analysis in the US. Lots of different examples there. But over 90% of your students are Chinese doing business in China. Why do they need a more international outlook? I think it's essential for the Chinese people that they can understand the global way, because global business currently is the global competition and the collaborations, right? So they have to do that. And realistically, do you think that international students wouldn't come to China to do an MBA unless they plan to work in China? No. You wouldn't think so? Yeah, because many years ago, they just uh, to want to work in China, they moved to China or work nearby, so they do the business MBA in China. But uh, uh, over the past 10 years, some of the international students, they just want to work for some years for experience. So they want to know how to do business in China. But uh, currently, when the Chinese government launched the new national strategy of the one road, one belt, so we receive uh, more and more applicators for short-term study, for the degree program and exchange, because they want to convert to learn how to do business in China to how to do business with Chinese. And this is the big Chinese government uh, infrastructure building project? Yes, yes. And you say that Guangzhou, where you're based, is where East meets West. Now, is that just a catchy slogan or is it really true? Uh, I don't think it's a slogan. It's really true because Guangzhou is the biggest city in south of China. It's one of the first city to open to the world in the history. Guangzhou is very famous for trading, for the seaport, logistics, and of the world manufacturing. So uh, Guangzhou people the, in Guangzhou, they are very open-minded to accept uh, new things. Guangzhou, even they keep the very traditional Chinese way, they want to new things. For example, that in our lunch and dinner, we have a soup in the first and the dinner in the last. And we, everyone prefer that have the high tea and afternoon tea. So that's why I think the most reason in Guangzhou, more West, because the people are more open-minded. And you have no problem attracting Chinese students then, but you do need to be in the international rankings to attract international students. And how do you move up the rankings? I think the internationalization for us is means the quality, because we want to attract more high quality international students. So ranking, I think, is the best way. So if you want to enter the ranking, you, you have to satisfy the basic requirement that you have a credit by 
either ASSB by US, Equis by European, and AMBA by UK. For my school has already triple credit. So the next thing after accreditation that you have to do the promotion and the branding by a lot of the activities. But I think the most important thing is that you have to pay more effort to your alumni and uh, industry partner relations. If they can appreciate your value, your way of the strategy, and your standard of the quality, I think that you can receive big support from them. And how do you think MBA education will develop over the next years? Maybe more online learning? How are you going to develop? I think that MBA is one of the most successful master level education in the world. So MBA has the uh, general management training, they focus on business practice, they focus on social responsibility and the internationalization. But uh, for the next years, because we are currently very dynamic, uncertain environment of the technology, of the rules, so I think that we may more focus on uh, soft skills and innovations. So some of the innovation for my program is that we want to set up the linkage between the research and the learning to produce the newest ideas by the faculty and the student together, so they can work together in the class after class and the faculty can use the ability of the research to help the students learn by doing. Well, Professor Wang, thank you very much. My pleasure, thank you. And remember to join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in digital banking and artificial intelligence. Bye-bye for now.